Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS Catalina Beta 6. This is available to developers and public beta testers and came in at a pretty large 3.16 gigabytes for my 2016 MacBook Pro 13 inch. And it, after this downloaded, it took only about 30 minutes or so to install. That's much faster than it was before. So I know some people complain that it took a very long time to install before. Let's take a look at the build number. You can see the build is 19A536G. And this particular build is a week later or so than we've seen with iOS. So it's kind of strange. We're a little bit behind here, but I would expect macOS Catalina to hit the normal late September release. Now, along with macOS Catalina, they also released Xcode Beta 6. So if you want to use Xcode, you're a developer using that. You will need Beta 6 of Catalina in order to use it, but it is available for download now. Now let's talk about what's new. And the first thing is pretty small. It's under system preferences and it's a new icon for notifications. So you'll see notifications here. This icon is new. The options don't seem to be new or anything, but the icon itself seems to be changed. So that's something that's new. Now, something I noticed in security and privacy, since we're screen recording here is under the left hand side, we actually have a screen recording section. So I actually had to click on this in order to be able to record the screen like I'm doing now with screen flow. So that's something to know. I haven't seen that anywhere else. I don't remember having to do that with previous betas. And so I noticed it this time around. Now, the first time we open apps, there's a few different splash screens that we've seen. One of them has to do with arcade. So the first time I opened app store, it gave me this little splash screen for the new arcade that's coming to the app store. And that's a subscription service that allows you to play games. It'll be available on iOS as well. So it looks like it's going to be about $4 and 99 cents per month. It's not available yet, but this is what I got the first time I opened it. Now, as far as other splash screens, there's other ones for photos that I saw. And in photos, you'll see there was a new splash screen as well. Nothing spectacular, but it just tells you about what's new in photos. Now, if we open up photos, let's go into photos here. And in photos, the sidebar has some new icons as well. So some of these icons are a little bit different. They're rounder and more bold. So just keep that in mind. Nothing really different other than that. The photos app seems to be the same as well. So just a few little tweaks here and there. Now, the first time I open podcasts, there's a new splash screen as well. You may or may not see this, but this is what the splash screen looks like. And it mentions Siri suggestions. So this will be built in to allow you to use Apple podcasts and suggest different podcasts you may enjoy, I suppose. So that's just something to note, something a little bit new with the new podcast app. So let's go ahead and close that out. And then finally, if we go into news, which I don't really use at all, honestly, but if you go into news, I'll wait for it to load in news, there was also a new splash screen that some people saw, some people did not, but you'll see, it just says the best stories from sources you love selected just for you. So you may or may not see this splash screen. Uh, I did not see it the first time I opened it. So depending on the Mac you're actually on now, as far as other little changes, there's some changes in the home app. So let's go ahead and open this up. And in the home app, the changes aren't huge. In fact, they're to little icons. So you still have home rooms and automation, but if I control click or right click on something, I already have set up my light panels here, and then I click the little icon, we have a couple new icons. So we have a little table lamp. We have an overhead lamp, normal light bulb, They've just changed these a little bit. They've also changed them for plugs. So if you have a plug, they've changed them as well. And it's a little bit buggy. As you can see here, this icon I right clicked on, it's actually there. If I click on it, it will turn on a light. If I right click here, you'll see there's settings for it. So the app is still a little bit buggy. So they need to do some work with that. Now let's go ahead and open up the TV app. And you'll see here's a new splash screen. We'll hit start watching. And if we go to movies, you'll see it says 4K HDR. There's some new icons throughout. So nothing really tremendously different, but it's nice and fast and a way to watch your TV shows and movies and things like that. Now, if we go into find my here, 
and under Find My, if I click on Share My Location in the bottom left, I've selected myself, and then if I click on Send, you'll see it says Share for one hour, Share until end of day, or Share indefinitely. So it looks a little bit different depending on what you've seen here. They're just updating it across not only Mac OS, but iOS as well. Now, quite a few people were asking on different forums that I saw if Finder was still dark themed because a lot of people were seeing this as a white background as opposed to a, a dark background when they were using it before. So it looks like they've fixed that this time around. Now there's no more physical changes that I was able to find, but there are some bugs to go over. So there's 31 known issues in the notes that still remain. And a couple of those are pretty pretty major, some are not. AirDrop, for example, won't work with a VPN. So if you have a VPN turned on, you'll need to turn it off before you use it. And the major thing has to do with iCloud files. So if you're using iCloud Drive, your file storage may not be accurate. And if you offload those files or you move them to the Mac, it may not move properly. So there's some issues there with iCloud. Now they've resolved 13 issues and three of those issues are, are pretty good that they've resolved. Quick Look now works properly, so if you highlight something and use the spacebar to use it, Quick Look in different applications, it should work properly. Also, if you're in the App Store and you're updating your apps, your apps should update properly now, and there's that splash screen again, it keeps coming up. But if you go to Updates, they should update properly now and no longer give you an error. And then also music navigation should now work properly. So a lot of issues with scrolling was happening before. It should actually work properly now. So you'll see it's a little bit choppy there, but I am recording the screen and it's updating. So it's pretty good overall. And other than that, one other thing I've seen is people were asking, is Firefox working currently? And it seems to be working okay for me. I don't know where it went here. Let's see. You'll see Firefox, I'm loading it, and it's working okay. So what I've found is it works fine for me. If we go to apple.com, it's working fine. You can scroll, use it however you want. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Other people are saying it's still an issue. So if you use Firefox, you may wanna use Safari for now if you're having an issue but overall it seems to be working okay. Now, if you're not running the betas on your Mac, I highly suggest you wait unless you don't have any critical apps. So if you're using things like Motion or Final Cut Pro or, or any professional app, the Adobe Suite or anything like that, I highly suggest waiting. And that's because with the previous version with Mac OS Mojave, I even had problems with the final release. So I normally, on my professional editing machines, I actually wait until the point one update comes out. So if you have professional apps, you really need to function all of the time, I would hold off. If you don't and you can afford to wipe the Mac and not worry about anything being lost or you have a good backup, then go ahead and try it out. But otherwise I would hold off. And that's it for Mac OS Catalina Beta 6. There's not a whole lot more in it, probably a lot of background fixes as well, but that's all I could find. Let me know if you found anything else in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I always do. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron, I'll see you next time.